Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm back today with another true crime case for True Crime Tuesday. And today's case is a solved one. It happened back in 2018. And I'm not gonna ramble on for ages, I'm just gonna get straight into this one. This is the case of cousins Vanessa Zaman and Leona Samlal. Two 18 year olds who were shot and killed by a member of their own family on the 13th of December, 2018. Vanessa was born and raised in New York and lived with her mother, Savita, for most of her life. Savita met Vanessa's father, Abdul Zaman, and they were together for a brief time, not too long, and she quickly fell pregnant. And when Vanessa was a toddler, they split up and they never really saw him. He wasn't really involved in the family. So it was Vanessa and Savita for the majority of the time. Savita describes Vanessa as a beautiful, caring, smart and compassionate daughter, sister and friend. She was completely adored by everybody that knew her. She was just a really, really lovely girl. She was very smart too. She was really into English and poetry. She graduated at the top of her class and she really wanted to become a forensic psychologist when she was older. When Vanessa turned 18 years old, she decided that she wanted to get back in contact with her biological father, Abdul. Despite the fact that he'd never really been in her life and just not shown her any love, she desperately wanted him to be involved with her life and she just like yearned for his love. She wanted her father to be involved in her life. But Savita tried telling her many, many times that he wasn't a nice man, he wasn't a good person and she really didn't want Vanessa to seek contact with him. She tried to say, you're better off not doing that. But as I'm sure a lot of you can agree, teenagers don't always listen and they want to do things for themselves and see things for themselves, which is why Vanessa was still keen to reconnect with him. Vanessa actually told her mother that she gave her the first 18 years of her life and she wanted to give her father the next 18 years, which is so heartbreaking when you consider what happened in the end. It's really, really sad that she said those words to her mum. So the two did get in contact and Vanessa actually ended up moving to Orlando in October 2018 to move in with him and his girlfriend who was named Leona Samlal. And Leona was actually Vanessa's cousin. So this means that Leona was Abdul's niece. So she was in a relationship with her uncle. It gets a little bit messy. I will try and make sure that this makes sense, but Leona had a three month old child with Abdul too, who lived at the house. Now there isn't that much information on the internet about Leona, other than the fact that she reportedly dropped out of high school in the autumn of 2016 and she was put on a missing persons list because the last time anybody had contact with her was on the 14th of October, 2016. So she was actually on a missing persons list right up until this case happened. Shortly after Vanessa arrived in Florida, it didn't take her long to pick up on the fact that Abdul was very abusive towards Leona and she witnessed things firsthand and she just didn't like what she was seeing and she knew she had to do something about it. So in December of that year, Vanessa, Leona and her baby moved to Virginia to live with Leona's mother. Presumably Leona had wanted to get out of this relationship. There wasn't any kind of argument between her and Vanessa. I don't think she had to convince her to move. I think it was more a case of, we need to get you out of here let's go. And Leona was like, yes, I agree. So it was a very mutual, quick thing. Vanessa had only been living there for two months. So it all happened pretty quickly. I'm pretty sure that the dynamic in this house must have been really odd because Leona's mother is married to Abdul's brother. The more I think about this, the more I start to just get confused. So basically there's two brothers, Abdul, and one that I'm not sure of the name of. The one who I don't know the name of is in a relationship and is married to Leona's mum. The other brother, Abdul, has a daughter named Vanessa and a girlfriend who is also his niece named Leona. Those two are cousins. And then Leona and Vanessa move back in with the mum. I'm not 100% sure of how all of this went down. Obviously, Leona had been on a missing persons list, so they must not have known where she was, even though it was with 
a family member. They must have been, I'm guessing, keeping that a secret. I'm not sure if it was a massive shock when they came back and appeared in Virginia to move in with the mum. It's really weird because it's such a huge thing that happened and it, it kind of just went quiet and there isn't a massive amount of information about it. So I'm not 100% sure how that all went down, but basically they ended up moving back in with the mum and everything was fine, they were living there. So Vanessa and Leona had been in Virginia for about a week and I'm guessing that they were thinking that everything was just gonna be okay from now on and that they would be safe from the abuse of Abdul. But little did they know that Abdul had actually followed them from Florida all the way to Virginia. Abdul tracked the girls down who were walking outside an apartment complex in Highland Springs, Henrico, and he fatally shot his daughter, Vanessa, and her cousin, his girlfriend, Leona Samlal, on the 13th of December at 12.27 p.m. First responders confirmed that both girls were shot in the head and one of them died instantly at the scene and the other one died later on in hospital, but I'm not sure which one was which. Reportedly, he got out of his car and confronted the two girls while they were walking on the street and he was in a fit of rage when he opened fire on them. He then got back into his car and ended up fleeing to New York, but he was arrested there five days later. He tried to fight extradition back to Virginia, but he lost this battle after three months and he was transferred there on the 28th of March, 2019. He was initially charged with second degree murder, but this was later upgraded to two counts of capital murder, as well as two counts of use of a firearm in the commission of a felony, first and second offence. Apparently though, it's not uncommon for people to be charged with second degree murder at first, just because they're not sure on the degree of premeditation that was involved. Obviously they have to prove that it was like a pre-planned crime, before they can charge you for that. So they knew that he wanted to kill them because he had gone all the way from Florida to Virginia. So it, it seemed as though he was going there for a reason, I suppose, but they just had to prove that before they could charge him with it. Abdul's trial was set to take place in August, 2020. So this month, but a year after the murders on the 13th of December, 2019, Abdul was found dead in his cell at Henrico County Jail. He was found hanging in his cell by a member of staff who immediately tried CPR, but he was pronounced dead at 4.45 p.m. by a physician. The staff at Henrico County Jail found loads of notes and pieces of paper with writing on it in his cell. Possibly some of these explained why he did it or reasons behind his thinking, but we're never gonna know what happened. These details haven't been released and we're never gonna find out why he chose to kill them and why he chose to kill himself. Did he just kill them because they'd fled his house or had something happened that led up to that moment and caused him to be in a fit of rage a week later? It's just sad because we're never gonna know why he did it. Vanessa's mother, Savita, is obviously absolutely devastated by this. She has come out and said, I never thought in a million years that she would die in the hands of her own father. I still think it's a bad dream. I think I'm going to wake up tomorrow and see that it's the worst dream I've ever had. And that is just so, so sad. I've not seen any statements online from Leona's mum or her sort of side of the family. There is a GoFundMe page, which is still currently active. So I will link that in the description box. I know that I am a tiny, tiny, tiny YouTube channel, but I just think that if I'm researching a case like this and I come across something like that, I might as well include it. I'm well aware that I am like a minuscule channel, but even if one person sees this and donates, like that is incredible. So I'm still gonna do it, even though I'm tiny, and it will be in the description. It does have a comment on it by Savita, Vanessa's mum, to say that she was gonna be closing it, but when I clicked on it and pressed the donate button, it still went through. So as far as I'm aware, it's still on, but I have included it anyway, so you can go and have a look and you can see what you think but it is worth including it anyway. The page was set up by Savita and she says that Vanessa died a hero and she was just helping her cousin 
and her cousin's baby to get to a safer life and to not be in harm's way, which ultimately ended up killing the both of them. This is all of the information that I could find on this case. I feel like it hasn't had that much media attention, especially over here. I think it was on a couple of our main sort of news channels, but I've never heard of it. It's just such a tragic story and I really wanted to do a video about this just to keep Vanessa and Leona's memories alive. Like, they died for such a stupid reason. They both died heroes in my eyes and I just thought it was important to do a video about this. As always, I would love to see your comments, what you guys have to say about it. If I missed anything out that's important, please feel free to leave it in a comment below. I love to interact with you guys about cases and discuss things, so that is always welcome. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I post True Crime Tuesdays every Tuesday. That's a really stupid thing to say, isn't it? Okay, I've said it now. And I also post every Saturday. That's more like haunted houses and the reasons why they're haunted or like haunted things and why they're haunted, that kind of vibe. So if you're into that kind of thing as well, definitely subscribe and turn on the bell for notifications. Smash the thumbs up button if you like this kind of content and I will see you in my next one. Bye.